for the last time. Hello everyone and welcome to A Great Alternative here at Glassbren. Now, I say here, this may look a bit different to the rest of the year. That's because Glassbren has moved from where they were near Carmarthen to where we are now at Lord's Park Farm, Park at Algoyth. So we are here again to talk about the month of January. We started in February last year, we've come full circle, and I think it's kind of perfect timing that we're here in January, just as Abel and his family and Glassbren, as the community that they are, are starting a new part of their journey here. And so we're gonna be talking about the agroecological permaculture market garden, but also Abel's gonna get into his plan not only for here, literally what you can see behind me, the new market garden, but also for the future of Glassbren. Here we are for the last time uh, for our monthly video on this great YouTube channel. And we're actually sitting in the site of the future polytunnel. So the one that we've been filming from every other month, that's coming over here and it's gonna be built right here where I'm sitting. And I'm gonna be talking this month about what goes into planning a growing season, what you'd be thinking about in January, but also what goes into planning a brand new growing site using the methods and techniques that we've been known for over in our old site and how we make a start with that. So I'm gonna be doing some of that today, pacing out, marking out the new growing site and talking about what goes into planning that out. So let's get into it. Okay, so it's a new year, Christmas is out of the way and January is really a time when we can start getting into planning our growing season. So you're gonna be really delving into your seeds and starting to think about what you wanna grow, how much you wanna grow of it, basically all your crop planning, which I've talked a fair bit about in other videos, I think. So I won't dive too much into crop planning today, but now's the time to be doing it. So if you haven't already, you wanna be crop planning and then you wanna be putting in your seed order. Otherwise, some of you might have already got started and starting to think about putting in some of your early season crops. So some folks start their tomato seeds, in January, you can get those going on a warm window ledge or on a heated seed bench. Some of those things like tomatoes, chilies, aubergines can get started now, but you've still got time to do those and obviously to do most of the other crops. So don't, don't panic. You might see on Instagram that people have already started their plants and they're already getting going. Just don't try not to be uh, moved by that, by what you see on social media, because you've got loads of time to get all of those things in. And in fact, with the way that the growing season has been the last few years with strange weather patterns and late frost and things like that. Really, I would, I would say, hold off, don't rush. I think the later you sow things, almost the better, because that way they're going out into the land, out into the, the elements a bit later on, and I think you've got a much better chance of them getting past those late frosts. So don't panic, good planning is everything. So make sure you take enough time for that to make sure you buy enough seeds. This is the time for dreaming, for planning, thinking about what you'd really like to do in your garden this year, what changes you might wanna make from last year, really enjoy that process it's a really a really fun part of the growing season and a really good way to spend your dark long winter nights but for us we're at the very beginning of the process we started seven years ago with our old site which was starting with a bare field and turning that into a diverse productive growing space with deep healthy lively soil and a real mix of plants trees bushes lots of different types of food growing systems and composting systems and yeah we're at the very early stages of putting that into place so i think we've we've pretty much chosen our sites and that's a big part of the first step is is we've observed the place enough to kind of know basically where the polytunnels are going to go where the main growing sites are going to go and that's kind of been quite easy with the site because it's kind of dictated to us by the topography by the aspect so the south facing areas you know where the sun is and so we don't have to agonize too long about where these things go. So where I'm sitting now is where the polytunnel is gonna go for our covered crop production. And you'll notice that it's quite far away from the main homestead and the main farm. And that's for a few reasons. It's, it's quite an obvious site, really. It's very sheltered. So living right on the edge of the coast, that's a big factor when you think about polytunnels because they are very vulnerable to wind. South facing, so plenty of sun. There's mains water here. So we've got a backup water system in case our rainwater catchment fails us in a drier spell. And then it's also proximal, really close to the road coming into the farm. So when we're taking produce off to go up to the packing shed to go into veg boxes, that'll be really convenient just to throw it on the back of a quad bike. Yeah, it's got lots of plus points. Possible minus points are, actually, I'm not gonna talk about those because I'm, I'm not gonna advertise how easy it's gonna be for people to, 
<laughs> to come into these tunnels. But um, what we lose in, in proximity to the house, we gain in it being the ideal site to put polytunnels. So, and then today me and Jason have been marking out the outdoor growing sites, which are also behind me, but way over nearer to the sheds. Downhill conveniently of rainwater catchment off the roofs, really nice and close to the packing shed and volunteer shelter, nice and close to the Wales Coast Pass, so people walking through can see and interact with the growing space and a nice gentle gradient so we can implement some of those on contour key line kind of food growing systems that we utilize so well over at Bronheil Farm the last six years. So we've been marking that out today, trying to get a sense of the space, the beds, the size of everything, and slowly, slowly trying to work out where we're gonna site everything. So if you're thinking about setting out a new growing space, design is a really key part of that. So I've talked in previous videos about permaculture design and this unique approach and decision-making framework that we use that can help us create growing sites that are highly productive, really in service to nature. So helping to increase biodiversity, increase soil health, store carbon, store water, but also really work for you as a gardener. So, so taking into account your unique needs your context, what it is you want to get out of your growing space, understanding your topography, understanding what's called the sectors that move through your site. So that's wild energies like sun, wind, rainfall, water, wildlife, people looking at some of the strengths, the weaknesses, the opportunities and the threats of your growing site and how can you design according to those. So you might have the opportunity of a public footpath going past your garden, but that might also pose a threat. So how can you design things into the garden? that really accounts for those things. Where might you integrate rainwater catchment? Where's your composting system gonna be? Are you gonna keep parts of the garden set aside for wildlife? Are you gonna create wildlife habitats like bug hotels and, and, and bat boxes and these kinds of things? So yeah, it's really worth taking the time to observe your site, taking time to know what lives in your garden, where it moves, where it lives, where it makes its home, what resources are, are available to you in the garden? How's the soil? What sort of rainwater catchment options have you got? really assessing your site before you make any changes or stick anything anywhere. Really get a sense of what is the blank canvas that you're dealing with. And then you're gonna kind of list off your key elements that you wanna have. So you might wanna have a compost pile and you might have decided what kind of composting system you're going to go with. And that's gonna depend on the size of your garden, your context, how much capacity you have to move compost around, what kind of materials you're gonna have access to to make compost where you're gonna site your water tanks, whether it be small water butts, big thousand litre IBCs or massive big water tanks, where people are gonna move through the garden. So maybe what's the, what's the easiest way for people to move with wheelbarrows full of wood chip or compost or manure? What kind of beds are you gonna have? Are you gonna have on the ground permanent growing spaces? Are you gonna have raised beds to make it a little easier for access? And then how much food growing do you want to do and how much do you want to balance that with things like flower growing or wild spaces for nature or fertility building plants like comfrey? Are you going to put fruit trees and fruit bushes in the garden? These are all things to list down, get them all listed, have them all on a piece of paper before you look at the map of your site and think, okay, so this is going to go there, this is going to go there. You really need to understand the best place to place everything in relation to each other. Thinking about like an ecosystem, thinking about all those complex relationships between all the elements and that really is a permaculture approach to, to garden design is thinking like an ecosystem, thinking like the forest. How can you create a web of interconnected elements that work together to make a truly sustainable and regenerative growing space that's highly productive, self-sustaining and in the closed loop system. So to help you with your planning, I can recommend a few resources that really helped for me. Gaia's Garden is a great book by Toby Hemingway. I mean, there's lots of people on YouTube you could check out. In the British context, I really recommend Hugh Richards. He's a really great guy at doing, um, yeah, he's been doing gardening videos a long, long time. He's got lots of books out too. Hopefully Jason can put a link here to an article that I published, the five books that most inspired our growing site. So that gives you a nice little intro into some of the books that, that we used when we were setting up our first growing site. But there's no substitute for just doing it and learning on site, on the job, season by season. So no better time to just get started. Normally, 
mm. we would, in the other videos, we would have a QA and a at the mm. end of the video for this. However, as I've mentioned in previous videos, the plan is that we're doing a much longer Q&A that's going to have lots of different questions from yourselves, from audience, as well as from myself and maybe even one from my mum that I asked her this morning. <laughs> um, so if you're interested in that, there's going to be a much longer video about kind of evaluating the year and then also anyone's questions to do with agro agroecological market garden um uh, running a market garden permaculture all that kind of stuff so if you're interested go and watch that video at the end but i'm just going to ask one question to yourself for this right for this able for this the end of this video the end of this year-long monthly tour what has been your favorite part of filming these monthly tours um and filming them obviously over the course of the the whole yeah, year. Yeah, yeah. Oh, for sure, the, the transitions, right? That's the most fun part. <laughs> Do you know what's been, I think, uh, sitting here now, where we are, uh, at this new place, I think the best part of doing these videos this year is that without knowing it when we started almost a year ago, we have got this beautiful record and showcase of the final year at our foundation site where we started and that we've preserved it forever in, in video form. So it can never be forgotten what was achieved there by so many people how much food we produced and, and the approach we took to creating it and, and working with it. Yeah, that's, that's a really special thing to know that we have that. I think that's, that's the, the big takeaway. Yeah. yeah, I second it. So we're hoping that these videos also have a bit of longevity in them that they will continue to help people yep. in your years to come. I was saying to Alicia the other night, if you know too much about our channel, we have some land. Sadly, we've not been able to move on to it yet, which is why we're, we're doing different things in the meantime, learning as much as we can. I was saying I already know that by the time when we finally get to have our own growing site, I'll be going back and re-watching this full year to be like, right, okay, what should I be doing in January? I think I forget that people value so much and mm. pay to mm. to be in your presence <laughs> and to, to ask you questions like with so many different people that have the years of experience in a certain area, re-watching some of these videos back to be like, oh yeah, the, geez, there's so much knowledge that you've yeah. given us over the course of the year. So. Well, on that note, if I could make a little plug. Um, so if you're watching from further afield, one of the really exciting things about this new place is that we going to be able to offer so many different kinds of learning experiences so we're going to be able to have residential courses so if you're further afield and want to come and get physically involved we're excited to say that we will have opportunities to do that in the future so just keep an eye on our social media and our newsletter our website and yeah hopefully there's a way that you can come down and actually we can meet in person and we can do some stuff in the market garden and we can learn together uh, glassbren.org.uk we're on instagram at glassbren and I write a weekly newsletter, The Veggie Love News. Um, so get on the website and subscribe to that. And that's where you'll hear first about everything that's going on. Excellent. Well, we're going to go film the longer Q&A now. Yep. But for this video, for the monthly tours, thank you. And that's it. Thank you for your Call time. Finished. Thank you for watching. Uh, it's been a pleasure to have you along for this year. And a big thanks to this guy as well for um, the invitation to do this and for such a memorable year working together. You're welcome. <laughs> okay, cheers everyone. Bye bye. See you later.